Your Steve Jones Show podcast will start shortly. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Brewers Outlet, your beverage supermarket on Reagan Street in Sunbury. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Q, routes 11 and 15, Hummel's Wharf, online at sunburymotors.com. And today's show brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Imports Domestics Microbrews, best selection of beer anywhere. Wine coolers, water, soft drinks, lots and lots of snacks. They roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day. Six great flavors of slushies and the pickle bar, led by the barrels and the dills, indeed, second to none. All the Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, and Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Mystery guest in a moment. First, our play by play call of the day. Pick it now, drives behind the back, spins on Lowy, lays it up and in. A spectacular play by Jalen Pickett. White. Goes to the far wing, hands it off to Cornwall. Cornwall down the lane, alley-oop to White Slam dunk, Penn State 67-40. Ingenious play-by-play calls. Just can't say enough about how. Okay. Uh, Yeah. All right, so I guess we have, what, one last mystery guest to sign in? That is correct. All right. I feel like it's what's my line. Uh... (laughs) Mystery guest, sign in, please. Uh, Steve, it's Jay. How you doing, man? Happy 10th oh. anniversary. I know I'm a little late, but uh, better late Jay. than never. Hey, first of all, uh, Jay put out was it a, a tweet, something today about Thon and 50 years yep. of Thon. It's great that you did that, Jay. Really yeah, great. Yeah, well, we got it. We, we, uh, ABC6 in Philly contacted us because they wanted to do a show. And so they're doing a half-hour show tomorrow night at 7 on Channel 6 in Philly, but uh, they wanted to get it distributed distributed and syndicated. So we got them on WABC in New York. Oh. Um, we got them on TA in Pittsburgh. We got them on HTM in Philly, State Colleges, ABC Station, WNETP in Scranton. So anybody out there that wants to get a feel for the whole fun thing, um, definitely – Tune in tomorrow at seven for till seven thirty, and then it's it's uh, it's eleven percent of the homes in the country. Uh, the New York market obviously helped big time. I mean, obviously you grew up around this. It's part yeah. of what makes has made this this place special. Why we've all loved it along the way. How important is that to you, Jay? That that we keep a lot of what has made the place special, and that we remember all the elements that made the place special. Well, you know, it's insane, this thing. I mean, people that have never seen it. I mean, you've been there. The operation's going on, and it's all run by students. And you sit here and go, here are a bunch of students. They don't know these kids they're saving. Right. They're raising money to save people that most of whom they will never meet. These families, I mean, just imagine being, and, you know, all of us that have kids, you know, you always... Dread, you know, the idea that you, you you find out that your child has cancer and all of a sudden now you're in bed at night saying, okay, I can help my child fight through cancer, but how am I going to pay for this? Yeah. And the families that go there, they don't ever see a bill. I mean, you talk about taking the burden off of them, you know, with you know with that kind of thing. But, but it's what makes Penn State special. I mean, it's, you know, 10 years ago I was asked to speak at Thon. And I told him, I said, you know, if you want to know what we are, is come come to Thon. This is it. And 13 years ago, my dad came back from from a Nike trip or a day early, and he went up there, and he said, I've been here 58 years. He said, I've never been more proud of Penn State than I am right now. Right. And I think I all that Penn night. Staters feel that. Yeah, I think everybody feels that because, again, it's helping people that we don't know. Yeah. Uh, and they need it. You know, and it, like you know, you're a father. I'm a father. I mean, when yep. your when your child is in the hospital, I mean, your brother was in the hospital. A different yep. circumstance, different circumstance. Yep. But your you know your brother was in, and for the family, it's the most frightening experience of their life. Let alone wondering how you're going to pay the heating bill. 
Yep, and, and the whole world stops. So hopefully you know, people want to watch, tune in. It'll be WPVI in Philly going to do a great job with it, as you would expect. And um, and I think it's going to be hope, – hopefully they're going to make this an annual thing. You know, with the COVID, with the COVID restrictions, they couldn't quite – they really want to do like a college game day um, right. with it, right. but they can't because of the COVID restrictions. And then um, it looks like ESPN's college game day tomorrow morning is going to cut in there somewhere between 11.05 and 11.15 to talk about Thon too. So um, Reese Davis has agreed to kind of do something. So it, it's just right that all this stuff happens, you know, for these, for these students. For you, how have you enjoyed over the last few years the TV experience? <laughs> More this year than the previous years. Oh no, I'm kidding, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, no. Yeah, sometimes there's addition by what subtraction this year. No, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, you know what? I got to tell you, it has been a lot of fun. Um, especially, I like digging into the X's and O's segments that we do, um, and really just trying to help be, you know, so a fan can watch and say, you know, hey, when you're playing. You know, Michigan. You got to watch for the interior run game and the play action. You know, I got to watch so and so. You know, or, you know when they were, you know, we're getting ready to play Ohio State. You know, you got to watch this wide up, but you better watch the other two as well. Uh, well, Ohio State is about eight you needed to watch this year. Right. right. Um, but you know, I mean, it was just giving people the ability to watch the game, just like you know when you prep for a game, you have an idea and you're in practice and you go, okay, I better watch, keep an eye on this guy, this guy, this guy, and we wanted to kind of give the fans that ability. And, and the interviews have been great. When you had you on, you were awesome. But, I mean, working with you and Todd Sadowski for all those years was was a lot of fun. Um, and put you in a different light. Um, obviously, you know, still rather be coaching. But, you know, whatever's in oh, the cards sure. is in the cards. What was it like having Scrap on with you, Tom Bradley? <laughs> <laughs> we would do, He would come up here, and we would drive down to York every yeah. week. And it was just... Oh my God! It was just X's and O's, and then it got to the point we started calling guys. We call like, you know, we called Bill Kenny one night on the way home. We you know we call guys we coached with, and it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Who drove? Oh, I always drove. Oh, I, I, that's, that's that's that's, I, we, that's we, why we were recruited oh. to Western PA one year, oh. and he went off the road and almost oh. killed us both. And and, and he to this day goes, "Well, I really saved your life that time." I'm like, "No, you drove me off the road." That that's that's Tommy. Well, um, yeah, because because I look, I saved I've been your life. The... I'm like, no, no, no. Because I've been off in the, the road car. in the snow somewhere north of Jeanette, Pennsylvania, which tells you who we were recruiting at the time. Yes, it does. And yeah. uh, okay, when you were riding in the passenger seat, did he give you the instruction of? Check the exits and entrances for police, because that's that's uh, the instruction. Oh yeah. That's the instruction I always got from him. Yeah, well, now with ways, he we don't. You know, he's like, "What is that?" I yeah, go, well, yeah, way. Oh yes, he ways. Goes, he goes, "You touch where the cops are." I go, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh, I got to get that." I go, "Yeah, you do." <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it is a it is a lot of fun. I I know how much you miss coaching. So when no. you, I mean, because it's it's in your it's in your blood, right? It, it's it's the it's something you've prepared for your entire life. So when you do yeah. sit down to put together the coaching segments on the show, do you watch film the same way you did as a coach, or a little different because it is for TV? Well, it's a little different in that you know you have to kind of make it so. You don't want to make it so simple that, you know, anybody that knows something about the game is like, oh, this is for idiots. But you also don't want to make it too high, highbrow, so to speak, that people can't follow along. You know, they aren't necessarily as versed in football as some other people. So you have to kind of thread that needle. Um, so, but uh, you definitely look at it the same way. And, you know, when I watch the game now, you know, I'll be, if I'm sitting with family and friends, I'm like, oh, yeah, you better watch this with this formation. You're like, how'd you know that? It's just, you. You, you do, but you know the, the game. The thing that's interesting as you look at football now is there's so much. So many people are so tied up in the analytics thing. Yes, that in the course of a game, you lose the chess match that you used to have. You know, I have a, I have a, uh, you know, a picture that Lou Holtz signed to my dad said, "I've never seen a better game day coach than you." And you know, there was that. 
yeah, you come in with the game plan and there are certain things that you believe you should do, but in the course of the game, it's snowing or the wind change or all of a sudden it's raining or somebody gets hurt, you know, and we got, you know, a corner gets hurt. Well, we you know, forget the analytics. You better go after the guy that came in, see if you can hold up. I mean, there's some of that I think has been lost because I think around the country, head coaches have become – I'm the recruiter. I'm the guy that oversees everything. I'm the kind of CEO. I have an offense coordinator, defense coordinator, and they do their thing. And you know, a lot of you know, Saban's not that way. You know, some of the some of the really guys at the top tier are the ones. You know, they they still got their hands on things. Um, but the model is so much that you know, a lot of times the head coach isn't doing that. Well, I'll give I'll give everybody two instances where feel for the game. It was 1978. And you know which two games I'm going to talk about here because it's amazing. Jay's memory is phenomenal. So 78, Penn State's playing SMU. And Penn State had the ball fourth down and won at their own 29. Uh, by the way, in the third quarter. And Penn State's doing nothing. Your dad went for it, got it. And they eventually scored in the drive. They won the game 26-21. Um, okay, you know. So for the analytics people out there, there's your moment. Uh, yeah. And and then and then that same season, he elected to kick off in the second half after Penn State kicked off to start the game because the win was so bad against Pitt that day. He thought they could win the game in the third quarter by pinning Pitt back there and did. Yep. And that is unheard of now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you kicked off. I mean, you, you you remember the 90 Notre Dame game. Yes. And midfield, the fourth down and one, and everybody saying, go for it, go for it, go for it. Nope. The game's tied. And he punted them down there. And, they're, you know, coaches are saying, what do you do? He goes, Holtz has to win the game. Meyer is going to throw us a pick. Yep. And two, three plays later, he throws a pick. We win the game out there. They were the one, win 24-21. I mean, there are so many things like that. And, you know, and, and that's, that's I think, you know, all the analytics is great. I mean, it's good that you have that kind of stuff. Nobody was better at analytics than Russ Rose. I mean, there's a guy, but he didn't need a computer. He did it in his binders. Yes. But when push came to shove, you know, there's some feel involved. And, you know, I'm going to move this person here and put this person there. And, and uh, you know, I think it's just, it, it's a little bit of a lost art uh, with a lot of guys now. Let me ask you this. This is completely out of left field. There are more analysts than ever before out there that are being part of college programs or even being part of NFL programs. Is that something you would ever consider just to get your feet back in the game like that? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, I've had some people once in a while say, would you be, would you consider it? It's like, well, you know, what exactly do you want? Because I don't want to be the 15th analyst, you know? And, right, right, exactly. Um, I hear you. But I think, you know, I, I think you're at a point now where um, there are too many of them, where things fall through mm-hmm. the cracks because you got so many guys. And at some point, you know, you see them saying, well, we're going to hire a research guy and an analyst guy and a strategy guy. And it's like, at some point, you go, that's what coaches do. Like, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't want to be that removed from – like, if I were a coach, I wouldn't want to be so removed that I'm just looking at printouts. You know, sure. I you – know, uh, you know, Sunday nights, you know, I would look at all the third downs and all the red zones. And by the time I went to bed at, you know, whatever it was, midnight on Sunday night, I – because I looked at it. And that's how I learned. You know, everybody's different. But mine was very visual. And I would mm-hmm. say, okay, third and three, they do this, and I'd write it down. And writing it down and seeing it really put it in my brain so by Tuesday night I could tell you hey you know Ohio State on third and three is going to come after you 62% of the time uh, only 20% of them are hot though so we can get into our hot protection and throw the ball and one out of five we're going to get there you know right. if they stay that and during the course of the game you, you kind of keep track in your mind you know we've had third you know four third down and mediums and they've yet to blitz us we're probably getting one next down you know I mean it's so those things become because you produce it and it was the same way you know, when I would put the game plan on the, the board for the quarterbacks, I didn't give them a printed one. I We would write it up on the board. We'd talk about why, and they had to write it. And the, most of the guys learned it better producing it with their own pencil or pen. It stuck. So, I mean, it's just a matter of, how, you know, 
you know, you just I would hate to be a coach who's just getting a report and not really have had my meat, my, you know, my got my teeth in the meat of what what is going on. I mean, you know, and I, you know, I was fortunate. That, you know, Mike Robinson was one of those guys. You said it once, and it was, a, it was like a right. Venus flytrap. Boom! It didn't go anywhere. Um, you know, we won at Northwestern in '05, and you know, the night before, we just reviewed. Hey, look, in a two-minute situation, they're going to play coverage. But once you hit, once you get around the midfield or on their side of the fifty, they're coming. And sure enough, we get the third down. We get across midfield. Mike moves Tony Hunt over there, throws the ball, we score, and win the game. Uh, you know I mean, that's, brought, just, you know, that's, I, that's I, the game. And I, I remember my exact call. I said, "Oh, and I here know, goes so North." <laughs> Right, they, they say Northwestern, and they're bringing everybody. <laughs> right, yep. I th- it's exactly what I said they're bringing it, and they did. And then he hit, he yep. hit Derek, and Derek made that cut to the inside, and he yep. was his first, his first career touchdown. Uh, yeah, and, and, and the defense coordinator for Northwestern just, just retired maybe a year ago. Yes, um, the guy that had been there forever, and I almost dropped him a note. I said. Sooner or later, you guys, you got to change your two minute pattern because we got yeah. you on it a bunch of times. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'll make it one last question here because I, I really appreciate you doing this because you oh, mean the world. But, you you mean, I mean you mean you you you've mean, been you, around Penn State so long. You mean, I mean the world you know, to me. Well, I appreciate that. And same to you, Steve. I mean, you know, the, the the amount of respect that everybody has for you is uh, around Penn State is immense. So take me through, and it's not 40 seconds, take me through 15 to 20 seconds of what it takes to call, the, to call a play in the box and make sure it's sent in properly based on down-distance situation, time of game, things like that. What does that take to do that over and over and over again 70 times during the course of an afternoon? Well, I think the big thing is you got to play the game in your brain all week. You know, even like Thursday night when, you know, ESP used to have a college football Thursday night game, they don't do as much anymore because of, because yeah. of uh, you know, the NFL ones. But, yeah. you know, I would, you know, and I learned this from my dad, you know, you sit there and watch a game, hey, what would I do here? And you're right. constantly thinking that. But those Thursday night ESPN games, I'd have the game plan. I'd go, it's third and five to 15, you know, what we do here. But, you know, I think the one thing that's lost in the no huddle stuff and the tempo stuff is getting ahead mentally in terms of, okay, they kick off, we send, we start the first play, we gain eight. Now it's second and two. You know, when, when you're in the tempo stuff, you're sitting there and go, okay, what defense at the end? They look over, up, they just move, we move, we go, okay, now let's call the play, we snap the ball. There's no huddle there. And so you don't have a chance to say, it's second and two. If we get the first down, what are we doing next? So you're really cheating yourself out of time calling the plays, whereas when you have a huddle, so say it's first and ten and we get eight yards, now it's second and two, we send the play. And and really the way we did it was a lot of wristband stuff. Yep. So on the wristband, like we may signal in F-28. Yep. And, you know, every week F-28 changed, but they'd go to F-20. Some of them they got mm-hmm. memorized. Some of them didn't change. But, you know, the right. quarterback looks at it. But he goes in the huddle. While he's in the huddle, we're saying, hey, if we get a first down here, what do you guys want to do? And sometimes Bill Kenny would chime in and say, hey, we've been killing them on the inside zone on that. So you would gain that 15 seconds before they came out and ran the play. Right. To okay. get yourself ahead of play or two, you know, and the show would come down. I want the slants. Run the double slants. Would you guys, you know, I want the draw. You know, <laughs> we were playing Wisconsin, and we're on, like, the 12-yard line. And he yeah. says, I, you know, five is, I want the draw. I'm telling you guys, run the draw. And, you know, it's like, Coach, there are nine guys in the box. He says, no, I don't care how many of you are. That safety is tired of tackling Tony Hunt. He won't tackle him. Yeah. The next play we run the draw, the safety almost avoids them. And Joe comes down and says, I told you guys. You know what I mean? So, you know, you had that exchange where it's now <laughs> with the yeah. no huddle stuff, you know, you, you lose that, that those dis- those conversations between plays because they're looking over you, you're looking back, you're signaling, they're looking over, they're signaling. You know, I, I would really like, I really would like the college to go to the helmets. The yes, I agree. System that the NFL does. And yes, you can get rid of all those signs, all the yes. guys holding up stuff. I mean, it looks Which like means a, nothing. Looks like it's all, it looks like a kindergarten arts and crafts show. I, know. I, I know. mean, like, look at the picture I made, Mom. Like, oh. you know, 
when you, when like football. One year, your dad was six for six. He called six plays, and all six were touchdowns, uh, it, oh. which was phenomenal. I mean, and that's Trust not the me, only year that us. happened. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. No, blame, blame. Where do you think I got the information we had a third from? third and 12 against Indiana in 08. Because I want the reverse. They're chasing the run play all day. Because oh, okay. third and 12. We I give know. it to Derek Williams. He gets 20 yards. I told you. Oh, oh, where do you think I got the information from? Oh, I know. Exactly. He, 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 he told he, me. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, you would see. All you had to look for is he reach in the back pocket and bring out the yellow graph paper with his notes on it. Yep. He always had the paper. He always had the paper uh, game plan in his hand, but he had that little thing in the back of his pocket with, with and, the, with uh, the, with know, the pencil he, where the, with the pencil where you could you know take the lead out of the pencil. Oh yeah. Yep. The yeah, yellow the pencil. plastic pencil. But you know, yep. it's, it, just to give you a, the when he was in the hospital the last day or so, yeah. I said to him, "Hey, if you got any plays, you know, if you got anything in that yellow graph sheet that's going to help you, it's time to pull it out now." Yeah, and he got a little smile on his face. <laughs> yeah. you know exactly what I was talking about. Oh, hey, I, oh this, you know, I think we. I, I always love this. We need to run the Sally. Oh right. yes. Oh yep. yes. <laughs> I dog on it. And, and usually, usually we had two or three Sallies every week. He's like, well, which one? Yeah. You know. He said, I don't care. Just run a Sally. <laughs> Either one. I don't care. Whatever you want. <laughs> Get me a salary, because, you know, because, like, because he'd know. be watch he'd be watching the game, and what would happen is he would see what plays you guys had set up that they could now hit because you you got them going flow one way, and he understood. Yep. He just knew. He, the thing that he was great at is he said, you know, he used to tell us all the time, "Get the chalk last." The yep. guy that gets the chalk last wins the game, and you got to anticipate their moves. And in '99, we played Ohio State, and we ran the pitch play up and down the field, two hundred something yards. Yep. And he and, and and you know, Franny, we were a little bit arrogant in that we went into the next game thinking, well, we're going to run the pitch. And Purdue made an adjustment where they put the defensive end really wide. You know, yeah. people forget Purdue during the Tilly years was great on defense. Yes, they, you know, they were. They all talk about Breeze. They were phenomenal on defense. So they put their defensive end wide. I was coaching tight ends at that time, and we'd turn out on that guy because you couldn't hook him. And right. the minute you pitched the ball, that front side linebacker would come up and blow the fullback up in the backfield, and there was nowhere to go because you couldn't get outside. Yep. And Fran just kept, you know, we were just a little stubborn about it. And – almost cost us the game. Yeah. And Joe came in and said, I told you guys last week, you're underestimating these guys as coaches. They made an adjustment you weren't ready for. And thank God we won the game because I'd yeah. really be mad. I that was mad the, enough because you got to understand, yeah. get the chalk last. Right. And that was the that was the Courtney Brown game where Courtney played a great yep. game. And LeVar and, had, uh, a and Le- 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 had a big play. And then, yeah, and they had four shots from the 10-yard line. Yes, and by the way, since we're talking about shots in the 10 yard line, that pass interference call on Cincinnati was baloney. <laughs> oh, that was awful. <laughs> what the heck? I mean, you, and you know yeah. what? Stafford at that point had thrown three bad passes in a row. I know. I'm not sure they would have won. I know he had. He had, he had, clearly, he had clearly started to feel it, the, the yep. pressure. Because he, you know, it, uh, you know it's. Uh, I, I, I'm not a Bengals fan, but I just love Joe Burrow. I love the way he carries himself. Yeah, so do I. I hope yeah. he stays healthy. He just you know the the comments he made about you know work work in silence last the week before you know work in wasn't silence, that good? Let your play talk. That was awesome. Yeah. Hey, as as I said earlier, obviously I think the world of you, your family. I mean the world of all of you. I know your mom had her birthday on Monday, so. Thank you so much for yeah, doing we this. Yeah, took her out to Denny's beer barrel in Clearfield and got her Oh, God, over. I couldn't believe you did that, that you took your mom to Denny's. And now, well, it's not I've that Denny's is bad. I've been going there on my dad's birthday every year for the last couple of years, and my mom always wanted to go, but because of COVID. And so we finally figured, you know, I think we're good. She's been boosted. And look, at the end of the day, my brother Dave and I, Dave was talking to me about, you know, estate planning and all this kind of stuff, right, with my mom and, you know, yeah. they're doing some things with estate planning. I said, Dave, the important thing is when we're all dead and gone, will there be enough for mom and Keith Richards to live on? Because <laughs> there'll be the only two people left on the planet. Keith Richards. My brother goes, yeah, you're probably right. She will be here after us. Keith Richards yeah. is. That's my, 
without question, <laughs> the amazing upset of our lifetime. <laughs> yes. My mom, Keith Richards, and the cockroaches will be on the planet after the nuclear war. I said, Mom, you don't need to worry about Russia, Ukraine, any of this stuff. I said, you and Keith will be there. She was like, he's not exactly my kind of guy. <laughs> no kidding. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, I could do this for hours. Jay, thank you so much for calling in. It means more than you no know. No problem. Thanks. No problem, Steve, any time. Jay Paterno. All right, I know what we have the king here in the final half hour, so we got to get to him. So apologize for running over there. No problem. That, it was fun. That, that one's on me because I am having was having too good a time. Um, and we could have talked for a lot longer, uh, a lot longer. All right. We'll come back uh, more in a moment. A few commercials coming up, some news, you know, Ben the King, and, you know, and, and more complaints from Matt. Just, you've developed a rep here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Taking your calls at 800 795 9565. This is The Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now, from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. And today's show brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket, and Ports Domestics Microbrews, the best selection of beer anywhere. Wine coolers, water, soft drinks, snacks, hot sauces. They roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day. Six great flavors of slushies and the pickle bar, led by the barrels and the dills. Indeed, second to none. All at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. And we're in the Sunbury Motors studio, Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf, online at sunburymotors.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to close out the week, the king. King. What up? Hello, fellas. You guys been watching Big Brother? Hello? I don't think I have yet, no. <laughs> no, I uh, no. <laughs> It's awesome. You know who's going to win? Misha Tate. You know Misha Tate is? Is she a fighter, boxer? Yeah, ultimate fighter, MMA. Yeah, she was huh? champion for a while. Man, Way she's go. good hey, at Big Brother, for me. I'll tell you what. She's, <laughs> one for me. Oh, she's good. They're, <laughs> the, the, what's this guy? This guy was a member. This is Celebrity Big Brother. He's a member in sync, and he's over the corridor. He goes, message to myself, do not mess with her. <laughs> she's <laughs> over there working out, and she's, like, punching stuff. And so, anyway, I guess you're not watching. Lamar Odom's on it, so... And he talks to his ex-wife, Chloe, all the time, trying to reconcile. Get the lingerie on the deck. Call the janitor. <laughs> what did you think of the halftime show? You know what? I was actually able to appreciate it and actually like it because I knew all the songs. I wasn't expecting them to go, like, throwback mid-2000s. So I, I was okay with it, actually. I thought it was pretty good. That was throwback? <laughs> For me, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't uh, understand a word they said, and then I heard that they were like Snoop Dogg was doing like gang signals and stuff. So I I didn't see it because I was grading um, projects at halftime that were due the next day. Oh, so I, well, so I, I, I was li I was listening to pro I was you know I put on the headsets and I was listening to projects that I didn't want to disturb anybody. Yeah. So uh, that's that I thought. Because we got back at three thirty in the morning from Minnesota, so the work I would have done in the morning I had to put off to the evening. That's why you need to find another job. You're missing everything. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I believe the line for my I believe the line for my job extends from here down to Charleston, South Carolina. Well, put it this way: I fell asleep right before the first half ended. I woke up I, and I was like. Wow, what was I watching? I said, oh, my God, the Super Bowl. But I taped it, so I watched it at 2 in the morning. So. See, that's a there good you idea. Go. Yeah. You can't fall uh, asleep during the Super Bowl. That's a violation. <laughs> it was a good game. So. It was. Yeah. 
But you know who I feel bad for, and I and you guys are probably think I'm crazy, but that little Russian skater. I, no, I know, do too. I, I'm. They never should have let her compete. So instead, they yeah, let her compete, and saying. then she gets totally berated by the world. She's 15, you know. Just, yeah, 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 she made a mis- she, not a mistake. She she illegally took some drugs to make her performance better. So penalize her by not letting her be in the Olympics. Don't let her be in there and then let her get berated. My God, she's 15 years old. So yep. I felt bad well, for I, her. I agree. So, I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. I mean, the, the yeah, penalize her. Tell her, you know what, you're 15. You can compete again when you're 19. But the, your penalty is you can't compete. Not, oh, yep. okay, well, we'll let you, and good luck to you. <laughs> you know, so. Right. No, exactly. No, I agree with that. It's it's the it's the adults that are the uh, yeah are at fault 15. here. She does a stupid thing. So that's okay because uh, in the opening segment, I had to explain to Matt that this is not unusual in that part of the world. <laughs> who the Russians? I mean, Matt. Oh, Russians, East Germans. Uh, hey, God. Oh, yeah, no, I know. I get that. What happened wasn't surprising. Just the the aftermath and seeing everything that happened afterwards. Her crying. The the, the other Russian girl that got silver crying. The the Japanese girl crying. Like it was just. Uh, I've never seen so much crazy just, hysteria after a figure skating. Which is really odd to me. And I just thought it well, was the silver kind of medalist a, was the silver medalist was mad. Yeah, and actually, that I, she didn't win that. That she didn't win the gold. She kind of had a right That's to be, what, I think, it, because she pulled she a she, five she, axle she, or whatever it's called. I mean, she wasn't. She wasn't sitting there upset about. Uh, oh, gee, it's too bad. I got silver. I should have won gold. That's what she was mad about. <laughs> yeah. the whole thing was weird, and it just kind of, I don't know, it just irked me. And it's all because they let her compete. Exactly. You know that that, that nothing good was going to come from it, and they knew that. And that, and, and all said and done, I hope the kid's okay. You know that this doesn't sure. wreck her. You know, but you know, with kids today, teenage suicides and things like that. I mean, she's on yeah. the cover of every newspaper in the world. That fifteen, yeah. God. Uh, well, I did a whole lot worse than that when I was 15. I'll tell you that. Steve will tell you that. So, Well, yeah, in fact, it could be a 10-part series. We'll come back with more in a moment <laughs> as we continue. And brought to you by Brewers Outlet, uh, News Radio 1070 WKOK. <laughs> hmm. When car repairs get difficult. Well, I, I just don't know. Um, Me neither. We get good. Sunbury Motors. More than quality new and used cars, Sunbury Motors specializes in complicated auto repair diagnosis. They can handle intricate repairs and even complete auto body with service open Monday through Friday, 7 till 4. And Sunbury Motors has made simple repairs easy. Maintaining your vehicle is necessary. Finding the time to do it is difficult. Welcome to Sunbury Motors Quick Lane. Open 7 till 4, Monday through Friday. Just walk in or call ahead. Relax in their remodeled waiting room with Wi-Fi, beverages, and snacks. Will Sunbury Motors factory train techs take care of your oil change, tire alignments, brakes, and inspections. Quick Lane, 6.30 to 6, Monday through Friday, Saturday, 6.30 30 till 2. Sunbury Motors, Ford and Hyundai, North 4th Street, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We take the mm. Mm. out of auto repair. All right. We're getting that time of the year. We are. I'm excited. How's Penn State doing? Won the last two, beat Michigan State, Minnesota. So now 11 and 12 at Maryland on Monday, and then uh, home games Friday and Sunday with Northwestern and and Nebraska. So they got a shot at the NIT, though. Trying to get there. Yeah. Trying to get there. Coach done a great job. So good. I like him. You I like him a lot. Good this year. No, so. yeah, no, UConn's very good. Guys they just don't have coach, any money. Very good coach. Oh, Danny? Danny's yeah. a really Danny Hurley's a really good coach. Always has been. A little too intense sometimes when I've been around him, but yeah, he's a good coach. Players play hard for him. 
Well, that's all you want. They, they have no choice. <laughs> they uh, have no choice. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> you will die. <laughs> your, your, your options are play hard or or you might as well just sit there and watch. Yeah. <laughs> Well, We're running tonight until okay. tomorrow morning. So. Yeah. Well, before we get to the basketball picks, I have the final records for football. Steve, 85 and 60. Yours truly, 81 and 64. King, 70 and 75. So there you go. Under 500? Yep. Oh. <laughs> But now we all start with a clean slate again because now we're switching sports. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what happens when you fall behind. You start just making picks. So. There you go. No excuses. Just didn't do very good. All it right. sucked. That's it. So, go ahead. <laughs> clean slate. Here we go. We're going to start Idiot. with a big one <laughs> yesterday. Or, or tomorrow, I should say. <laughs> in the Big Ten. Illinois and well, if Michigan it, if State. It, if, it's yes, if it's yesterday, I think we all got a shot at getting it right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tomorrow, Illinois and Michigan State. Steve. Boy, oh, boy. Because Illinois did not play well at Rutgers. Um, this is the problem that, that Michigan State has. Point guard play is not great, and their inside guys can't handle Kofi. I'm going to take Illinois on the road. King, who you got? I got uh, Michigan State. I like the guard play. I'm going to stick with the Illini here. I I think they're going to play angry and and bounce back. But I can't I can't get a feel for both these teams right now. I liked Illinois a lot early in the season. I kind of like Michigan State. I don't know about any of these teams now, but I'm going to stick with Illinois because I like Coburn a lot. So now we go to the SEC. Bama at Kentucky King. Oh, no question. Alabama. I'll never pick Kentucky. Oh, I forgot. Yes. <laughs> I, I, it's a hateful you got. university with John Calipari there. Oh. I'll take the Giants. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'll go, with the, I'll go with Kentucky to win. <laughs> I, I, I got Kentucky as well. But I a hope Alabama close game, beats though. them to death. I just, you know, yeah. No, I think it's going to be a close game. I, I like Alabama has been those pesky team the last couple of years, 25th ranked. They're off to a pretty good start, so it'll be a close game, I think. All right, now we go to the Big 12, Texas Tech at Texas. Steve. Well, this is the rematch, except Chris Beard doesn't have to worry about walking into the arena in Lubbock. Uh, I think Texas will win this one. I got Texas, too. King? I like Texas Tech. All right. All right. So far, it's me and Steve and, and you, Oppo, right now, King. <laughs> there we go. That's the C again. I got a witness to the ground. <laughs> Tennessee yeah. at Arkansas. Steve. Well, Tennessee just had the big win. I think they beat Kentucky. Yes. Um, <laughs> by I'll, double digits, I think. Right. And then we were putting the list together, and the, and the suit says, where is our Kansas? I, I just looked at it. I'm like, oh, just, I, I don't know what to do. I, I'll take Arkansas. King, who you got? I got Arkansas because they beat Kentucky. <laughs> I'm going with our Kansas as well. Sweep of the Razorbacks. All right. Now we got Georgetown at Nova. King. Villanova. Yeah, I like Nova, too. That was some win they had the other night. I love the coach. Have a bromance with him. <laughs> All right. Steve, who you got? Georgetown is awful. Pro I mean, Villanova will uh, they'll win this game by 20 points. Minimum. Isn't Patrick Ewing the coach, sir? Yep, and they are awful. I wonder why he can't recruit. Oh, I'll, I'll, there's a couple. I'll, we'll say some stuff off the air. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. We, we may not be totally attentive to certain whatever. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> it's uh, not that important to me, so. <laughs> Big Ten again. Michigan at Wisconsin. These are, This is a uh, Sunday game. King. Michigan. Steve? 
I'll tell you right now, I can't figure out how Wisconsin keeps winning. But the game's at the Kohl Center, so I'll go with Wisconsin. <laughs> I just, I mean, honestly, I saw, I saw, saw him play in person. I sat back and go, I said to Dick, I said, number one, they have no bench. They have five guys. They have no bench. Their bench average is nine points a game. All right? And the five guys they have are good. Davis is really good. I don't get it. But they're playing at the Kohl Center. They'll win. I'm with you, Steve, on this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Michigan here. I think a guy like Hunter Dickinson can make a difference and maybe make a play late and get an inconsistent Wisconsin team. So I'll, I'll go with Michigan. They'll foul them out. <laughs> Good. That's true. All right, next one, Pac-12. Oregon at Arizona on, I believe, on this is a Sunday game. This Arizona might be, might be the best team in the country. Oh, okay. I mean, they might be, I mean, the best team in the country. Tommy Lloyd's done a great job. He's taken the Gonzaga system offensively and is using better athletes. Wow. Uh, Arizona, big. I will take Arizona as well. I like them too. Gang. Big, big. Well, I was going to take Oregon, but now I, I, Arizona. <laughs> and then finally, Florida State at Duke. King. Duke. Steve? Coach K's back, and not only that, I don't know if you've seen Florida State this year. It's a total mystery to me as to why they are mediocre. I mean, they just can't get going. Duke will win. They'll win by at least double digits. All right. Queen, clean sweep, I should say, of the Blue Devils. All right. Lock, we're officially locking them in for week one of our college picks. Locked out. There you go. Steve, you wouldn't believe the house. I bet it's great. I had the floors professionally done. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's all solid wood floors throughout the house. Oh, nice. Uh, it wowed me. I, I spent last week on pulling the carpets up and the nail plates and all that. And great. All the guys said it's all set. Man, what a job. Beautiful. Wow. That is awesome. I'll send you pictures. So. Oh, good. All right. I, I That's cool. Believe it, so. That's great. Well, another big week in the books. Um, I'll do the show Monday from College Park. Because Penn State plays Maryland on Monday night at 7. It'll be a 6.30 airtime. So Monday show will be from College Park, Maryland. So we take the show on the road. I'll be in South Windsor, Connecticut. And I'll be and right here. <laughs> Sounds great. Today's show brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street and Sunbury, the Beverage Supermarket on News Radio 1070, WKOK from the Sunbury Motors Studio. Have a great weekend. Party time, game time, or just fun time. Doesn't matter what time it is because it's Brewers Outlet time. The Beverage Supermarket has the area's largest beer selection, imports, microbrews, ciders, and domestics. Pick from over 100 ice-cold 12-packs and dozens of 24-ounce singles. Soda, snacks, hot sauces, fresh roasted peanuts. Make it one-stop party shopping and don't forget the pickle bar. So whatever you're celebrating or just doing it up, Brewers Outlet Reagan Street Sunbury wants to see you. And thank you for your years of patronage.